Hello everyone and welcome back. Um, so this is part four of our controller modeling series and today we are going to be modeling, let me bring up the image real quick, we're going to be modeling um, the little menu buttons and also the d-pad so this should be pretty easy. I think we can reuse the buttons for these two smaller buttons and the d-pad will be pretty easy as well so let's just get right into it. So like I said, the uh, menu button should be pretty easy to uh, add. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select um, this X button right here. I'm just going to hit Shift D and then I'm going to drag it over. Um, and I don't think, yeah. So I just duplicated the um, the shape of the button. I didn't actually duplicate that uh, letter inside of it. Um, I'll make sure. Yeah. Okay. So what we can do is let's go into the front facing view again. I hit one on the numpad and I'm just going to kind of manually drag this over. Um, I'll tap into edit mode, select everything, and then I'm going to hit S to scale it down a bit. Okay, I'm going to shift D. I'm going to drag it over. Same thing over here. Um, and what I'm going to do is let's just add a basic material to our controller because um, we don't want these to be clear like these buttons over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the controller. And what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to go to the material tab right here. And let's actually go to shading so we can get a better look at our uh, object. Um, so now we're in the shading tab. And I'm going to switch back over to EV for a little bit. So now we're in EV. You'll notice our buttons look really weird, but that's because reflections don't always work very well with EV. Um, actually, let's go material. Yeah, there we go. And I'll actually stay in cycles. <laughs> Sorry, but um, yeah, so you can see our buttons are also pretty reflective. They're supposed to be transparent, but we're in the material, not realistic shading. Um, so let's go to our materials tab, and with this one select, or with the controller selected, let's hit a new material, and we'll name this um, black plastic. And then let's open up our preview right here. So this is what the material will look like. Um, so let's just make it a nice black. Um, yeah, I mean, that looks pretty much like what we want our controller to look like. Um, we don't really, really need to tweak the roughness. Um, you see the roughness is at 0.5. Um, if we made it uh, 0, it would be super reflective, which we don't want. And if we made it 100, it wouldn't be, it'd be more like a cloth look. It'd have more of a cloth look to it, but we don't really want that. We want it to be kind of like a glossy uh, material. So that looks good. And then if we click our buttons, we can change it from plastic to that black material. So you can see there, it looks similar to the um, the control the just the controller in general, um, the reference that I, I mean. So if you go to wireframe, you can see it looks similar. Um, it doesn't have the icons on it, but we can probably add those later. Um, and while we're at it, we might as well add it to these um, like thumbstick holders. Oops, did not mean to add any material. Just change that to black plastic as well. Um. And we can do the same for the thumbsticks, although we'll probably need to add that bumpy material later if we can get around to it. Okay, so there we go. Uh, and you see if we go into realistic rendering, it looks pretty cool, you know, with the... Uh, so right now all we have for lighting is the sun object, but you notice it looks pretty, you know, pretty okay. Um, we still have a lot more to add to it, so... Yeah, that's this is just kind of like a general overview of what it looks like so far. Um, so let's go back to regular view mode and we'll go back to the layout tab. So now we are now that we have our um, menu button and like task manager button added, um, let's add, quickly add a um, D-pad. Um, so the D-pad's really simple. All we really need to do is add in a primitive. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit um, Shift A and we're going to add in a mesh. And we're going to select cube. Let's get the cube in position over the D-pad. And then we're going to drag it out so it's not inside the controller while we're working. Um, now what we can do is we can tap into edit mode and we're going to scale it down. So it's roughly the size of the D-pad. That looks good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to quickly, we're going to go into face select mode and we're going to delete this back face. Because since it's going to be in the controller, we don't really need it to be rendered. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to box select this top face right here by selecting that little dot. And then we're going to E extrude it up. And we're going to do the same for each side of it. And you can see it automatically locks the axis for me when I extrude it. 
That looks good. Um, and we also need, since we extruded it, we have to delete these back faces that were created. Okay. Um, now let's see if we can add a bevel modifier to quickly add a, a little bit of smoothness to the whole thing. Or, or yeah. So, oh, so I just added a bevel, bevel modifier. You see, it's a bit too aggressive. So let's lower the, the width a bit. You can hold down Shift to uh, more finely tune the uh, bevel. Um, let's bump up the segments to. I think. Let's see. Let's put a uh, smooth shading on our object. Um, yeah, I think that looks good. So we'll leave segments at two, and we'll just pump the width width up a little bit. To uh, I left I put mine to point zero two four, but if you're it might be different for you depending on the uh, the units you have set for your scene. So just kind of eyeball it. Um, I think that looks fine. So I'll leave the um, bevel modifier for now, but we could probably hit apply. So um, we already have it um, lined up with our uh, reference in the front. So let's go to the side. Let's just drag it in, and let's probably gonna have to do this from out here. So let's drag it out a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit R and then X to rotate it on the X, and we're gonna kind of angle it a bit. We're just gonna kind of nicely uh, put it in place, nice and manually. So I think that looks good. Okay, and while we're here, let's add that black material to it. So let's go to the Material tab. And we'll hit black plastic. So you can see our, our controller is coming along. Um, now I think let's see we're at about two minutes. Uh, so what else do we have to do? We have to add those uh, trigger buttons on top. Um, yeah, so I think we'll uh, work on the triggers now. So they should be fairly easy. They're basically just more cubes that need to be tweaked a little bit. I think in the next episode we'll um, maybe try texturing our object a bit. We'll see. Um, so I'm going to tab out of sol or tab out of wireframe um, and let's look at our reference picture real quick. So you can see we have um, trigger buttons and I believe the bumpers. I can't remember what they're called. But yeah, so let's start with the uh, bumper. We might not be able to get to the triggers in this episode. so. Kind of, we're going to go rough, roughly off our reference again, so I'm going to add in another cube, and then we're going to drag this up, and I'll tab into wireframe. And let's just drag this over to the bumper. Um, and we're going to kind of do this similarly to how we uh, made the controller in the beginning, so we're going to tab into edit mode, scale it down, um, and let's leave it right here for now. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to vertex select and I'm going to select the bottom vertices. And actually, you know what, they're fine there. Let's instead select the top vertices. We'll select the arrow so it's a bit easier to control. Um, and let's just kind of scale this in a bit on the X. That looks fine. Okay, now I'm going to hit E and extrude this over. I'm going to drag this, drag these vertices with box select, drag it down. And then I'm just going to kind of box it out like we did with the controller in the beginning. So box selecting it and then making sure I extrude it every now and then. I'm just going to keep going until we get towards the end. And let's take a look. How does this look? Uh, we need to drag this up a bit if you can see with our side reference picture. I think that looks good. Um, just kind of taking a peek. So it looks like um, it actually doesn't look too bad. I'm trying to see if there's any real curvature. It looks like it might curve a little bit in the back. So what we can do is we can go to face select mode. And let's just select this last face, or let's select the middle face, and we'll turn on proportional editing again. And let's just drag this a bit, like so. I think that looks good. Let's go into side view. And we don't line it up perfectly, but put it right about there. Um, let's turn on smooth shading. And then let's see if we can uh, turn on auto smooth. So we'll go to object data, normals, turn on auto smooth. Mm, that looks okay. Maybe let's turn off auto smooth for now. Let's try a bevel modifier instead. So we'll go to. Um, 
Actually, let's delete the uh, bottom face as well. So I'm going to hit Shift H, and we don't need these bottom faces. I'm going to turn off proportional editing. Delete the bottom faces. Alt H, bring everything back. Let's add a bevel modifier. Let's just kind of let's leave this as a flat shading for now, so I can see what we're doing. Um, so yeah. Go to point zero seven. We'll bump it up to two segments, and let's see what that looks like now. Shade smooth. Mm, I think we're going to need a subdivision after all. Let's go subdivision. Uh, we don't want it to be perfectly smooth, so let's tap into edit mode at two edge loops like that. Um, that looks pretty good. Uh, How's our uh, geometry looking? Yeah, I think we'll uh, leave it at 2 on the view for the subdivision. And we won't apply that yet. We'll just leave that as is for now. Um, and what we can do to make this easily uh, copyable is we can, while our object's selected, and make sure our 3D cursor's in the center. If yours isn't, you can hit uh, Control-C, I believe. No, uh, Shift-C. If you hit Shift C, it'll recenter the 3D cursor. And with our object selected, we'll go Object, Set Origin, um, Origin to 3D cursor. And you'll notice now that little orange dot is no longer in the object; it's at the uh, bottom. And um, if the origin's at the center of the scene, what we can do is when we apply our mirror modifier, um, we can mirror it over the X, and it'll be perfect over there. So you have to make sure your origin's centered there, though. So. And while we're at it, we can also set the black plastic material to the uh, trigger, right? Or to the uh, bumper, I guess. So that looks good. Don't forget to save with Control S. Um, now I think what we can do is we can uh, add this little like continuation break right here. As you can see, there's like a little bar that connects them. So let's do that real quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide these reference pictures because we don't really need these right now. Just click on press H, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to our shape right here, but I'm going to go into face select mode. I'm going to select these three faces. I'm going to make them, give them a really high mean crease so they're flat. I think we can get away with one. Yeah, that looks fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the faces, and I'm going to hit Control D, and then right click. So we just uh, duplicated the faces. You can see they're right here, and then we're going to hit... Um, Actually, we can leave them as part of this object. So I'm just going to hit E to extrude them. And I'm going to drag them over to the center. And then if we get close enough, the mirror should merge them. So you see they're close. But let's go to the um, modifier panel. And let's go to mirror. And we'll up the merge limit. And you can see there it just snapped together. Um, we see some lighting artifacts here. Um, I think that's because of the mean crease. So these faces are still selected. Let's just bump this mean crease down to zero. Um, how close do these have to be? I think what we should do is um, we're going to move the mirror modifier up above the subdivision. So let's do that real quick. Um, yeah. As you can see, now we have a bit of lighting glitch over here. Um, Let's just add in an edge loop right here, and we'll drag it all the way to the end. And uh, that should fix that lighting bug that we were having. About this all seven problems. Yeah. So we're also gonna. I don't know if you saw that, but I just undid it. So we're also gonna add an edge loop here, and that should help with that lighting glitch that we were just having. Um. So you can see now we have a nice little buttons and a nice little connector at top at the top. Um, and they're all sharing the same material as well. If we go to the Material tab, they're sharing that black plastic. And you can see there is our controller now. So it's definitely starting to come together. Um, we'll probably have to uh, tweak a few more things, but in the next episode we will be going over how to add in the triggers. Um, and then yeah, I think we should be able to uh, texture or at least add some fake depth with the normal mappers too. So uh, thanks for watching. If you have any uh, input, please leave it down in the comments. Um, but yeah, see you later.